a person who doesn't have a strong social network will definitely face more difficulties when they have to deal with certain emergencies or accidents. And a person who is dealing with chronic stress will definitely struggle more when they are forced to deal with a sudden loss or death. I'm not saying that you will be guaranteed a perfect world filled with rainbows and butterflies and unicorns if you choose to make changes to achieve your dreams. But I do believe that even with the worst misfortune in life, if you choose to nurture yourself, if you choose to nourish your soul and make sure that it is on its best it can be, you can get through life with a lot more peace and ease. Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. This couple of days have been extra energetic, motivated and inspired for myself and I'm pretty sure it's because I'm currently in my ovulation phase which means that I am just on a higher energy in general. You know, just the last few days, it was pretty intense. I went on a date night with Kevin on Friday night and we got home maybe around 11.30. Had a couple of drinks that night, so I actually woke up with a migraine on Saturday morning, but I managed to pull myself to the gym and did a pretty good workout. And I spent the entire day planning for the podcast episode today and also did some weekly review on the site, went out for lunch with Kevin, got a birthday gift for a birthday party last night, came back, got a little bit more work done and then started getting ready for the party, which while I was doing it, I recorded a content for Instagram, went to a really fun party on a Saturday night, got home at 2 a.m., went to bed at 3 a.m., woke up at 9 a.m. today, and went on to edit my video and finish doing it. And then I went on to write this podcast. And right now I am recording this at around 5 p.m. Like I'm feeling really energetic and inspired and motivated. Like that's the keyword that I can have right now. And so I also wanted to really maximize this season of my life to push myself further in terms of my goal setting and my dream chasing journey. We are currently at the final quarter of the year and I am taking this chance to reflect and to really strategize and think about how can I finish this year strong and prepare myself to make 2024 the best year yet for myself. And I really wanted to take you along in this journey. In this episode specifically, we will be diving deep into setting intention. We all know that once we make up our mind about something, that's when our brain really processes that something has to happen. We only cross the road when we make up our mind that it is safe for us to cross the road. We only release our pee when we've registered that we are safely sitting on top of a toilet bowl, we don't have any pants on, and it is safe to release our pee. Anyone can say that they want to travel the world or climb a mountain or run a marathon, but only those who make an intention to do so will actually sign up and train and complete the marathon that they were talking about. And same goes to your yearly goal. Only when you actually mean what you're saying, only when you actually set the intention to make 2024 your best year yet, that it will actually become the best year yet. I understand that life sometimes just happens, like you don't know what tomorrow will bring. But to a certain extent, right, you have control to not get pregnant or to not get drunk every single Friday night. 
So there are many things that you still have control in your life. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are strong mentally, if you are in a good headspace, if physically you are well maintained in terms of your health, you can deal with everything even if it is a very negative situation in the most optimized condition. So here are some examples, right? A person who has a low physical health because of poor diet and health habits will definitely deal with a viral infection worst. A person who doesn't have a strong social network will definitely face more difficulties when they have to deal with certain emergencies or accidents. And a person who is dealing with chronic stress will definitely struggle more when they are forced to deal with a sudden loss or death. I'm not saying that you will be guaranteed a perfect world filled with rainbows and butterflies and unicorns if you choose to make changes to achieve your dreams. But I do believe that even with the worst misfortune in life, if you choose to nurture yourself, if you choose to nourish your soul and make sure that it is on its best it can be, you can get through life with a lot more peace and ease. I think that's what changed for me when I decided to pursue happiness and personal growth after I got depression and recovered from it. I become a person who is constantly aiming to evolve for the better. And the definition of better can look very different for everybody in different seasons of their lives. So for example, last year, I was focusing a lot on creating space. Like that is the theme that I set for myself, create space. And that is because I needed to detach myself from a toxic hustle environment that I kind of really got sucked into during the pandemic. So I really took a step back from many things that are kind of like business and results driven. And I decided to make more time and space to do more fun stuff like learning how to roller skate or I was cooking a lot more at home and I was making time to actually meet friends and catch up with them. And the following year, which is this year, my word of the year was rise. Because I felt like after a year of creating space for myself last year, I was ready to rise up again for the lifestyle that I truly desire. If you follow me on social media, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can actually see the change. Like with the rise and the creation of this podcast, I now am a lot more active on social media and am more proactive in terms of making the career of my dreams a reality. And so I want to invite you to ask yourself, how does a better 2024 look like for you? Will you be focusing more on your career? your relationships or your health. There are many things that you can want for it to get better in the next year. But we also know that at the end of the day, we only have 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 356 days in a year. And so we have somewhat limited time and attention span to be achieving every single thing that we want. And my advice based on my personal experience is to just focus on one to two things that are your core intention of the year. While for the rest of it, you would kind of like go with the flow to see what is the priority at the moment and to focus on it at the moment. For me personally, I cannot think of a specific word or a theme yet but I know that my main focus would be on building and growing my career as a content creator. I want to take what I have built this year to the next step, to a higher level. I feel like this year, what I did was really to build the foundation for myself to run faster next year. And once you are able to 
identify your core intention, like a theme of the year or a word of the year, you then want to kind of, based on that intention, identify how things will look like in different areas of your life when it is the better version. So let's just take myself as an example. I just think that it's easier for me to explain what I'm trying to get across. So my focus is going to be on growing my career as a content creator, right? So it is inevitable that I'm going to be dedicating a bigger slice of the pie from my time and energy to content creation. And it makes sense because what I'm trying to achieve is to really make a change in my career or at least adding an additional income stream for myself. I know that to get to what I want, I have to spend more time on strategizing and looking at the big picture to go out there and initiate collaborations to really promote about my podcast on top of what I currently am already doing in terms of producing a new episode every single week. Because the truth is, you can be a content creator that focuses only on the creative process, but if you really want to monetize it, if you really want to make it an income stream that can possibly support your lifestyle, you have to be strategic with it. And with that being my main focus, I really want to take care of my mental space as well. I can already foresee that it is going to be a very stressful lifestyle in general because I am juggling between a day job and podcasting. And it's not just creating, but also focusing on the whole strategizing stuff and all that. I know that it's not going to be easy. And so right now, I'm already setting an intention that for my mental space, I really hope to be able to remain carefree or at least more chill and relax as much as I can while doing all those things because it's only when my mind is clear and relaxed that I feel like I'm able to create good content, more impactful content that can leave a mark on this universe. And so then... For me to be able to maintain that good mental space, I really need to be mindful with getting enough sleep to continue my daily meditation practice, which is something that I noticed recently that after meditating every single morning for one and a half year now, on days that I don't get to meditate first thing in the morning, I do find myself to be less in peace And it just doesn't set the tone right for the rest of the day. And so I really want to continue on this practice because I really feel like it helped me a lot in terms of keeping myself mindful and to be self-aware about where I am at the moment. Um, And I also want to continue to keep reading as a habit because I want to be able to continue to learn more about myself and about humankind and about life and just to keep growing myself. So mental space-wise, that's how I can see that in terms of lifestyle, that's how I really want it to look like. The third thing that I kind of identified that I want it to look better for me is for my relationship with my fiancé, Kevin. I noticed that ever since I started this podcast, I am constantly under some kind of stress and pressure because I have more limited time now and I really wanted to do well in both of these things on top of trying to still maintain my fitness level and to take care of the home and all that. So I have been spending less quality time with Kevin On some days, I might be extra stressed and I might be easily agitated when I deal with Kevin. And sometimes I just got lazy to really 
talk to him about my feeling and all that because I just felt like I don't have enough time. I need to get things done. I need to go to bed. Like I, I admit that I haven't been the best partner for Kevin, but I also think that we are at a stage of our relationship that we are so comfortable with each other that we started to take each other for granted. And that is something that I actually had kind of like a heart-to-heart serious conversation with Kevin last weekend. And I felt like after having a very good talk about it, I feel like we both are trying again. We are really putting in the effort to make things work for our relationship. And I'm really loving this season of our life where we are both trying. And that is why I kind of want this heart-to-heart proper conversation about our relationships and how we feel and how we are doing as a couple I kind of want to do it more often next year because I can see that if we were to practice this frequently at least more frequently than now like at least once a month or every week I'm not too sure how that's going to work but I can see that having some sort of practice like that will definitely help us a lot especially because Next year is probably the year that we are going to start preparing for a wedding, if we are having a wedding, right? And so I think it is very important for me to kind of have some sort of routine or a practice that can ensure that things are going well for our relationship. So I was talking about wedding, right? The next area that we're going to look at is finances. So I know for sure is that I need to save up for a wedding and also a car. And if things go well, hopefully I can save up for a honeymoon as well. So in terms of wedding, Kevin and I are pretty much on the same page that we don't want to pressure ourselves too much in terms of that. So we are probably going to see how much we have and then decide what we are going to do. Ideally, I would love to have a close, intimate wedding that is aesthetic, that has nice videographers and photographers to capture every moment. But if that is something that we cannot afford at the moment, or we feel like the money will just be better used if it is invested to his legal practice or my content creation company or whatsoever... I feel like I want to put the money into this instead and have the wedding of my dreams when we are older and we are able to have that. Like, I don't want to pressure myself too much financially for the wedding. Um, But yeah, like, it would be nice to have a wedding and a honeymoon. And on the other hand, I really need to prepare to get a new car soon. So I've been surviving with an old family car for as long as I can because I really didn't want to commit to another loan at this stage of my life when I'm trying to build my career, when I'm trying to prepare for a marriage and a relationship. But recently, as I've been driving this old car in the highway, I am starting to feel lesser and lesser secure while I'm driving the car in fear that it is going to break down anytime and so it is something that I need to kind of start preparing myself for in 2024. I don't know if I would actually buy a new car in the year 2024 but financially I just want to prepare myself in terms of that to get the down payment right and for the monthly loan repayment that I would have to make. In terms of health and wellness, that is also an area that I would always look at in terms of getting myself better. And I do want to say that I think my current practice of just going to the gym three to four times a week and also to practice intermittent fasting during the weekdays when I can do it, I think that it is working very well for me. I am not looking for a big fitness accomplishment or anything like that. I think I would be happy for this to just maintain in the coming year. But, I mean, it would be bonus if I'm able to train to a point where physically I just look a little bit more sculpted and lean. That would be already very good for me because then if I were to have a wedding, I would at least look 
hot and cute. <laughs> but anyways, one more thing that I kind of want 2024 to look differently for myself is in terms of my style. So I find that in recent months or this year maybe, I have been putting a lot more interest in terms of fashion and makeup. I really enjoyed pairing my outfit differently every time I go out. I try to accessorize more and style it differently every time I put on the same clothes. And I'm really enjoying the process. Like I really love seeing the look that I have in photos and videos whenever I create content. So I can see myself to be exploring even more in terms of colors and prints and patterns in the coming year. Same thing for the space that I'm living in. My plan for my podcast and my content is to really have a very vibrant and creative background and space. So if things go well in terms of my entire content creation process, the space should look a lot more fun and creative too. <laughs> and... While I shared with you so many different areas that I expect to look a lot better in 2024, I do feel like if my core focus is on building my career and to really make it the best that I can, I already know that I would have to sacrifice the time with my beloved family and my friends. So that is something that I kind of expect it will be compromised and I really don't want it to be. So I just kind of want to keep myself more mindful in terms of that to be to put in more effort when it comes to just dropping a phone call to my mom or to text my friends even via the phone by sending stupid memes or anything like that. I really still want to maintain these relationships and hopefully still be able to improve them and to really show them that I care and that I love them even when I am so busy with the work that I'm doing. So I'm hoping that I can like kill two birds with one stone by inviting my friends to create content with myself or to have my family to be a part of the content that I'm creating. Like I need to be strategic with this. So I kind of went on a bit too much about myself, but I figured that you might be curious about how I identify the different areas in my life that I want to look better next year and you want to see examples of how you can do it, right? But everyone's lives are different and we are all at different seasons of our lives. So I'm pretty sure that there might be one thing or two things that you find helpful as a reference, but remember to always apply it so that it kind of makes sense for the life and the season that you are in, okay? And if you are stuck, okay? If you are not sure about which area of your life that you even want to improve, I would just say pick a few and just try improving them. And as you go on, you might realize that, oh, actually this health and wellness thing, I don't want to be too stressed out about it. So I don't want to spend too much effort and when you learn at that point, you're just going to adjust your plans or your actions towards it. I really think that personal growth is a very trial and error process. So just do that and you will be fine. Okay, so now that we have decided on the theme of the year or the word of the year, and that we have also identified how at different areas of our lives, if it were to be better in 2024, how it's going to look like. The third thing and also the final thing that I want to share with you today is to really visualize this life that you want. So for me personally, I am a very visual person. Just by writing or talking about these things, it's not enough for me. So I like to create a vision board. You can Google on different... You can Google about different methods on how people create vision boards. Some people like to do magazine cuttings. Some people like to find photos and then use Canva to make it beautify and put it into a desktop wallpaper. For me, I just like to create a Pinterest board because I think it is easy and I kind of sync my Pinterest vision board into Notion. You can do that. So I feel like that was already enough 
for myself. So I just create a new board called 2024 Vision Board. And I started keying in the keywords to search for photos or images that kind of make sense for what I'm trying to achieve or how I want my life to look like. So for example, I keyed in the word content creators and I found a very nice flat lay photo of a vlogging camera and another photo of this girl who is working on her laptop and camera on the floor. I found a very nice photo of these two girls creating content together. And I'm hoping that that will be kind of like my life when I can have my friend to be a part of my content creation process. Um, yeah, like it really depends on what you want. I also have like inspiration for the car and the manicure life that I like. I also have like fashion inspirations that are kind of colorful, edgy, but still kind of like classy. I was thinking if I want to share my vision board with you guys, but I've always enjoyed keeping my goals and my vision to myself. I mean, I kind of shared with you guys about my vision, but let's see. I just feel like I like to keep it a secret and so that it is something that I can focus on, that I don't have pressure um, that the whole entire world is keeping track of my goals for myself. After you have taken some time to set your intention by doing all the things that I shared with you today, the next steps that I would be doing in terms of preparing myself to finish the year strong is to really take time to observe what are the things that I'm doing now versus what are the things that I need to do to get to the place that I want to be and to really find the breach. I would identify the action plans and kind of like break it down into simple, doable steps that can take me there. And in the process of doing that, knowing myself, I'll probably create new systems and like identify metrics that I need to track or pit stops that I need to take to maybe build a notion super brain that can help me to supercharge this entire process. So I'm not sharing with you all of that today because I'm still kind of in the process of setting my intention and getting all these steps identified. And, and that is why I wanted to start this process early because I wanted to give myself the space and the room to think, to observe and to tweak things if they don't work out. And I feel like because this is kind of like a long process where there is a lot of information that we need to digest and think about, I'll probably give you another update about the next step of finishing the year strong in a few weeks time. Hopefully by then I would have a more solid, like clear step-by-step -step process that I can share with you so that it can help you in your personal growth journey. I, I really feel like right now, we are just at the beginning of the beginning of an epic growth journey. And setting intention can be very powerful. When I had the intention to be depression-free, I did it. When I had the intention to run a half marathon in 2017, I did it. When I had the intention to start a podcast this year, I did it. I know that these are all things that people often say that they will do and many people don't really take the action. And I also know that this is probably one of the reasons that a lot of you actually follow me and consume my content because you know that I am someone who, whenever I set an intention, I am very likely to going to proceed and make things a reality. And I will continue to update you about how I do all these things, how I achieve it, and if I failed, what did I learn? Because I am really obsessed about this personal growth thing because I think that it is making my life a lot better. And because of that, it's making the lives of the people that I love better as well. And so, yeah, I will continue to inspire you to be the best or at least a better version of yourself and to share all of these things with you in my journey. That's all that I have for you today. 
if you find this episode to be very helpful or if you love my podcast in general, I would really appreciate it if you can share this podcast on your Instagram stories or with your friends so that we can have more and more people to listen to all these experiences and learnings and to grow together in our adulthood journey. I look forward to see you in my next episode. And this is goodbye. Bye-bye.